fish and collard greens. I got what you need if you want. Mr. Anderson here. Wanted to show you guys the terrace garden. It's the first level. What you're looking at now is borage. And borage is a plant that has a cucumber taste, but it's actually a flower, I believe. And the flower that you see is actually my strawberry plants that I had them in the pots. The strawberry plants in the pots. The beautiful flower, and out of the flower, you get your strawberry. And then this is my asparagus patch. You'll see. What happens is the asparagus shoots up out of there and comes up and makes this big fern and then it gets a red seed on it and drops back down and continues. This is a perennial. It means it'll come back every year on its own. And if you can look down and see here is a spear coming up. That's a spear. And this is like the second year for these asparagus. But what will happen, that spear will grow up that spear would grow up about like that and you cut it at the base and eat it as asparagus but they're thin right now so you got to let them get thick and i got the parsley planted in with the asparagus so the asparagus patch is looking real well then over here i had turnips in i took the turnips out and i put in dragon tongue beans and purple hull peas and these peas will climb. So what I have done, you see these strings, let me pan out. See those orange strings going up and making a pyramid type shape. So I, I, got, a, I got like a TP peg in the ground there, run the string up to that eyelet which is just a screw screwed into the wood and the eyelet is clamped. That's a nice little device that you can find at your home improvement centers in the paint department. And you just continue to run it, that, run it down in the peg and go back up, run it down into the peg. And that's what you'll have. You'll have your nice little, little trellis or string apparatus for your beans to climb up because those beans will climb up. And let me give you a shot of the little device that you can get I think it's 99 cent and what it does is it clamps so you just open that up you will screw into the wood and then put your clamp on and squeeze it tight and it will be hanging from the screw and you got this eyelet and that's the eyelet that you run your string through tip and trick tip and trick I grow you grow so that's what it looked like 99 cent I believe in the paint department at your home improvement centers, specifically Home Depot. Send me a check, Home Depot. I doubt that they will, but yeah, that's for all you guys that got your pole peas in or your cucumbers or your squash and, you, and they climbing on you. You can, you can just do it with a big pole and put this at the top of a pole, but if you don't have that kind of space, you can figure something out where you can use this apparatus. And you can use it for many other things like making fences, all types of things. Tip and trick. Email me if you use it and do something with it extra special, you know. My kitchen garden is your kitchen garden. Help me out, Mr. Anderson. So we're going to move on. Got the nasturgeon. Love the nasturgeon. Natural pest control. In the pot here, we got lemon balm. Lemon balm with spaghetti squash running out of there this is a spaghetti squash running out of there and what i'm gonna do is hook up another little apparatus with the string to show you guys so i can do some vertical gardening and run that spaghetti squash up the first spaghetti squash plant i had got attacked by the squash vine boys and he wiped me out lucky lucy okra again you can see the okra look at that beautiful beautiful eat it raw beautiful burgundy if you cook it it'll turn back it'll turn back uh green got some whimsical in the garden kiss to cook everybody love mr anderson's cooking stay tuned we're gonna try to get you guys some bistro brilliant what that say uh beauty lives within 
The garden gonna help you find that. Got our collards, collard staked. You will be rewarded for staking your collards. And this is what I mean when I say stake your collards. That's a staked collard. And look how upright it is. So it can concentrate on growing. I cut these about every week. I eat collars like every week. And I don't let my leaves get too big because you can cook them easier when they're not so big. Now, this is an example of a collar that's not staked. Look how it's got to run across the ground. Then it's got to bend up and it's got to go through all these changes. When this one, he can just grow, straight up grow. So that's what we do with that. Collards. You can see my cucumbers done attached to my strawberry and mint hanging basket. Got some white dots on my cucumbers. Don't know what that is. That's a glimpse of my cucumber. I got a uh, lemon cucumbers. These cucumbers are lemon cucumbers. They look like a lemon. And you want to pay attention to your vine because they'll them squash boy vines will get to cucumbers too. I had some try to get in there. I cut them out, trying to get rid of them. See if I can get you a picture of one of the lemon cucumbers, how it look. Get in there, let's get in there, let's get in there. Move that leaf out the way. Yeah, that's what a lemon cucumber look like. Yeah, lemon cucumber. Then we got something in our flower. You know, he don't look like he belong there. Let me cut and get him out. I grow, you grow. Mr. Anderson here, we back. That's what you gotta do with your garden. You gotta observe. That's the last O in I grow, you grow. Observe your garden. Observe your garden. You eat three times a day. That's where you're getting your food at, so you should visit your garden three times a day. If you can't do it three times a day, at least in the morning and in the evening, so I'm blessed to be able to come home for lunch and give my garden a walkthrough, but when I walk through, that's my lunch. So you're looking at a sugar baby watermelon hanging out of the container. That's a sugar baby watermelon. This is what's left of my squashes. I had like six plants. I think I got three left. That's a butter stick squash. Got my zucchini left. We still producing produce. That's why you plant plenty of plants. So if you run into some, you're going to lose at least. You need, to, like any corporation, they have a loss prevention. They take into account 15 to 20 percent in the budget for loss prevention because you're going to lose it to varmints, pests, you know, this thing, unforeseeable things that you cannot control. You're looking at a cantaloupe. That's an early cantaloupe right there. Early cantaloupe. Letting him come down. This the Anastasia kiwi planter here on the trellis. It's growing up the trellis. This is the male. And then on the trellis, wow, look at that. I'm sun drying some tomatoes right there. I got some early wonders sun drying, the smaller ones. You know, I got some pearl tomatoes, letting them ripen in the sun. Got to notice I got the big vine because they continue to drink the nutrients out of that vine as they ripen, but it won't allow them to split because they're not getting an influx of water. Water. They're not getting an influx of water. So you see I got my, my tomatoes ripening. We're going to get you down to the tomatoes. That's the female Anastasia kiwi right there. Oh, yeah, early summer equals early fall so what i have there is my transplant so when all of this stuff that you're looking at now passes away i'll have these plants ready to transplant in their place and continue to produce your produce like in the podcast the best never rests i got this looking good and i'm chilling and everything is fine but i'm also looking to things that are not as though they were. I'm looking at the fall season as though it was going on right now. So I'm planting, I got, I got uh, kale, broccoli, cauliflower, spinach, all these different things so that I can continue to produce my produce. And then that's a sage plant right there. Uh, I had the few sages over there, but I wanted to increase my sage. So I bought me a sage plant. 
like I said, early cantaloupe, early cantaloupe, Russian red kale, Russian red kale seem to be holding up in the summer months as well. I love this Russian red kale. It also does well in the winter time. It holds up in the winter, so I think I don't find me a very versatile lettuce that I can deal with, a very versatile lettuce. As you can see, I'm taking my time. I'm gonna run this video for maybe 14, 15 minutes, and then I'll do a part two, because I don't wanna rush you guys, but I'm gonna tell you what, what's going on with these beans here, these more dragon tongue beans and purple hull peas and you see they got a little yellowing going on i done my research on the little yellowing that's going on and beans naturally fix nitrogen out of the air but you inoculate your bean seed with with a nitrogen mixture because what beans do is they use up all the nitrogen in the seed the bean seed to come up out the ground and then when they roots establish it takes them a while to re, you know, revigorate themselves and pull that nitrogen out. And the nitrogen is what makes the foliage real green. So this is just a phase that they go through. You can prevent this phase, if you don't like seeing this, you can prevent this phase, tip and trick, tip and trick, with some fishy motion or some coffee grinds. You can put some fishy motion or some coffee grinds, water in the fishy motion when you plant the, when you plant the bean in, and it'll supply with a steady supply of nitrogen also the other things that are in um, fish emotion and that will allow you to skip this phase sometimes sometimes it don't but don't get alarmed if your beans is showing some yellow because they're going through a phase but uh i got some coffee grinds in and i probably hit it with some fish emotion but i hadn't been able to do the fish emotion because we just been getting rain we've been getting rain and i love the rain but I'm not going to overwater my plants, so I'm not giving them fish emotion. I only water once a week, but I, I got rain twice a week. I got two inches a uh, day before yesterday, and I just got an inch yesterday, and it's threatening the rain right now. So I'm going to segue into part two and take you guys down into the lima beans and the New Zealand spinach and the beets. I grow, you grow.